Yeah, good afternoon. It's Jim from jagfx.com. It is Saturday the 3rd of February 2024. This is my weekly analysis video where we have a look at the pairs, the Forex pairs. I'm trading on the daily time frame using the high probability and divergence trading methods from my books. So I hope everyone's weekend's going okay. It's nearly 5.30 p.m. local for me on a Saturday here. Uh, all good. Yep, uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe button. As I say every weekend, I know they're not the most exciting videos by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm just trying to get the message across, so that's it. Um, so first up, we normally have a look at the news for the week ahead, so let's have a look at that, and that would be here, I believe, hopefully. This is a Forex Factory free economic calendar. It's in my local time, so it's uh, that's one good thing about this. Other than the free part, is you can set it up with filters, etc., to see what sort of news you want. I'm only interested in um, high impact or the major events, so that's why I only see red on my screen here. So Monday, fifth of Feb. Uh, just talking head, Fed Chair Powell speaks. ISM service of the US. Tuesday, holiday New Zealand. Not sure what that one's for. February the sixth. Ah, oh, Australian interest rate. So they're not expecting a rate rise. But so that's a uh, be careful with tra trading the Aussie dollar during this time. It's uh, first Tuesday in the month. So that's obviously that. Uh, right, uh, Canada on Wednesday. Um, the Bank of Canada, Governor Macklem speaks. Not sure, male or female? No idea. Uh, New Zealand employment numbers at New Zealand. And unemployment claims out of the US on Thursday. Friday, we've got. Um, Governor Bullock out of Australia talking again. I don't know if male or female, no idea. Um, and Canada employment numbers. Normally, Canada and the US have their employment numbers on the same Friday, first Friday every month, but sometimes if the Friday's early in the month, like it was yesterday, sometimes Canada or the US go to the next Friday. In this case, it's Canada. So, employment numbers out of Canada. So, the biggest ones are probably employment numbers out of Canada, New Zealand employment numbers, and the Biggest one's probably the interest rate news out of Australia for on Tuesday. All right, let's have a look at the charts. Before we have a look at the charts, let's where there's a Word document. All right, now most people watching this video have read my book, so they understand what's on the charts. But in case you haven't, or you you know you're struggling a little bit with the language or the my accent, have a read of this. Pause the video, have a read. This just explains all the different colours, different settings, etc. On the charts. All right, so. Basically, red, anything red means bearish, anything green or blue means bullish. Um, Grey vertical lines there, like a warning signal, something's about to happen. Um, yeah, and the bottom indicator is the, Mac, the MACD Platinum, it's just a zero lakh MACD. Oscillates around the zero level, and generally I'm looking to sell when it's above the zero level and buy when it's below the zero level. So it's all fairly straightforward. Now, let's have a look at the chart arts. Trading view, where is it? Here it is, over here. All right, use trading view for one analysis. You'll see my watch list on the right here in alphabetical order. It's not all 28 pairs, obviously. It's just a sample list of pairs. I'm not a trade signal provider. Uh, you'll see different highlights. Highlight and light blue means there's um, trade or trades on and some trade management's been taken. Dark blue means um, trade on, no action taken. Orange means something I want to talk about in the video. And if there's no highlight, means nothing happening on that pair, so. All right, we'll start with the top of the list. We'll start with the Aussie USD. Maybe. All right, eventually come up. Now, normally on the right-hand side is the, the pair I'm trading, the date, um, the, the trade signal. So the last one was this buy signal here, which is designated by the blue lines. And my notes on the chart here, um, so that's, Normally, the right-hand side is the most recent trade. You'll see sometimes on the left, there'll be older news, which is, in this case, is an old sell still on. So there's a sell from the 3rd of Jan still on. Here's my trade management. So 9th of Jan, I closed half. that probably be in here somewhere, in there. Closed half. MACD's through the zero level. We'd already bounced off the moving averages. High risk against the trend trade. Then we took this buy here, and it went absolutely sideways for a week and a bit. Then Friday's news wasn't good to us. So not looking good on this buy at all. This green line, this green level here, I'm going to extend this line across, is the actual 65 cent level, which is a big round number on the Aussie. But yeah, the 
US news, the non-farm payroll, employment numbers weren't good, as you'll see by all the US dollar. So now we're probably going to have, um, I don't know what's going to happen here. We'll see if the 65 cent level holds. The, the good thing is, um, all right, I took this trade basically on bullish, hidden bullish divergence. So if I get, if I do get stopped out, and it probably the way it's going, then more than likely, unless this level holds here, I'm still in the sell, which is a good thing. So I can drag that stop down on the sell, and that offsets some of that loss if we do take a loss on the buy. And because the MACD platinum is still below the zero level, I would be looking for another, because we would have started with, I'm looking for another buy, was what I was going to say before I get sidetracked. We started with hidden bullish divergence. Now, if this keeps on dropping down, goes through the stop there, more than likely we're going to have regular bullish divergence there. So it's like a one, two and divergences. So I'd be, this is the sort of trade I would hedge. If it went against me, I'd take the sell, hedge sell, then I'd take the next buy. I, I'd probably guarantee it'll work out eventually. I can't guarantee it, but you know what I mean. So the MACD Platinum is well below the zero level still. And it looks like we're heading down towards a stop. But as I said, we've got the sell trade still on. So talked not long enough about the Aussie USD. CAD Swiss, we're in a few trades here. This is a God, good one hitting. The good thing is we're in a sell from here, right? So that's the 29th of September. I think this is my oldest trade. Stop loss for that is here. Above this high here. So I can't lose on that. Locking in that profit there. All good. Then we took a buy on the 17th of Jan here, already closed half, so two days later closed. So on the 19th, on the open of this candle, closed half. My stop's now dragged up there. Can't lose on that. Cannot lose on that. So good. Can't lose on the sell. Can't lose on this buy. Then we took this other sell here on the 25th of Jan, um, and it's just gone nowhere. My stop for that is up here. Uh, but it's not the end of the world because we've got these other trades on. So even though it's not going in my favour as yet, no big deal. MACD Platinum still above the zero level. So all good on the CAD Swiss. Three trades. Hope that. Euro CAD. All right. What's happening here once it comes up? Right. My charts are a bit slow. We're in a sideways. Look, I've drawn these blue lines and it's still struggling to break it. We could extend that. It's still struggling to break it. Uh, we're going to sell, can't lose, 22nd of Jan, took the sell here, MACD, platinum above the zero level, all very flat, all very tight, it's not a, it's not a, has good moves, but then it can be sideways this pair, so can't lose on that Euro cat. Euro pound, pretty sure we're going to sell still from, is that, 4th of Jan, can't lose, there's the trade management, 12th of Jan, closed half, stop down, so 12th, is that in here somewhere, I think, yeah, in there. MACD platinum through the zero level, close half, dragging the stop down, it's above this high here. We've got this support level here, big support level. You can see it's fairly relevant level there. Price is bouncing off that a bit. Um, so that's why that line's there. So I'm going to probably extend that a little bit. Just keep an eye on that. And we've got this divergence happening. So if a buy presents, I'll take the buy. I've got to sell on, so it's all good. Can't lose on the euro pound. Euro USD, which I could say the same thing, similar to the Aussie. The Aussie, the Euro USD, and the Pound USD all tend to move the same, especially when there's news. It's nah. The good thing is, like the Aussie, I've still got a sell on from the 3rd of Jan. So this is sell here. Uh, I tightened the stop up nice and tight on the 31st of Jan. I think there's US interest rate news or something coming out. Um, so 18th of Jan, closed half. So I'm thinking about in here somewhere. In here. So closed half in here. MACD is definitely through to zero level. Price is at the moving averages. It's against the trend sort of trade. Drag my stop down. Can't lose. In the meantime, I took this buy on Friday. And taking a buy trade on a, especially something like the Euro USD on the day before non farm payrolls, it's always going to be a 50 50. In this case, it was the wrong 50. It's gone straight down. So, will it hold down here? Again, if I get stopped out, it's not the end of the world because I've got this sell trade still on. So it's going to offset the loss. Uh, we start looking at possibly drawing divergence lines, trend lines, etc. But we're not looking good on this buy from Friday. But that could change Monday. Pound CAD, highlight in orange means something happened. And this is one of those ones that's going to annoy me. Right, I'm sorry if the video is a little bit disjointed. It's just my the charts aren't coming up as quick as I like and I'm just pausing the video. All right, so what happened here? This is a pain. Took a buy on the 28th of December. All good. 
Um, 12th of Jan, closed half. So let's have a look. So I'm thinking it might be in here somewhere. Closed half. Can't lose on the buy. Cannot lose on the buy. Took this sell here on the 29th of Jan. Went down. Price sort of went into the moving averages. I'm the nard. I'm the nard. On the 1st, which is there, it was getting... Getting a bit bullish, and you know, it was a high risk trade. Price is already in the moving averages, MACD platinum close to zero level. So I dragged, I dragged the stop right down inside the entry level. And Friday's news bang took me out, so it didn't lose. It's a break even trade on the sell. So I'm out of the, I just leave it on the vid, on the chart to show you guys on the video. Um, so I'm stopped out of that, and as Murphy's Law would have it. It has gone down again, so I should have been still in that trade. I probably, in hindsight, again, which is a great tool, I know, the old time machine. Um, I should have probably had my stop above this camel here or something in there somewhere, a bit higher. But not to be. I've been stopped out. It's not a loss, which is good. Can't lose on the buy. So it's probably going to drop down and take out my stop on the buy. And, yeah. So it's a pound cad. So I'm stopped out of the sell. I'm only in the buy. Can't lose on that. So didn't lose on the sell, can't lose on the buy, so it's not the end of the world. Pound yen. All right, here we go, video. Right, the good thing is, what's going on here? It's a little bit messy, I'm sure. Right, we're in this buy trade from the 15th of December. And here's the trade management. Gee, sorry about that. Can't lose on that. So there's a stop now, there's all the trade management. Can't lose on that, it's going up. I've dragged the stop up. Generally, I like to keep the stop between the 50 and the 100 if I can. That's 100 there and the 50 there, moving averages. Uh, and I took this sell here. Now, this got a bit messy, and I probably good, did a, made a good call yesterday. On that candle there, I closed half on the open of this candle here. It just priced it. Even though we're not down to the MACD platinum, it's not down to the zero level. That spike down and that sort of candle there, just reading sort of price action, sort of look, spike down towards the moving averages. This is an uptrend. You know, you look at the moving averages, that's that's a that's an uptrend. Um, this is a high risk trade to begin with. So I closed half, put my stop down in a no lose position, so I can't lose on the sell. And it's just about it's close, within a few pips. So where's my stop at? 187828. Look up, look up here for the high. Uh, What's that? 187737. So we're, we're still about nine pips away from the stop. So that you can just about think that the sell's going to be stopped out on Monday. But all good because we're in a can't lose on that. So that'll be a small winner if it is stopped out and I can't lose on the buy. So life is good there. Pound USD. Not looking so good. This is probably the trade that I'm, um, yeah. All right, well, it's sideways for a long time. I, I, I banged on it about last video. Took the buy. News wasn't kind to me at all on Friday. Like I said, the Aussie, the Euro USD, and the Pound USD all do exactly the same thing. So that buy is not looking good. Stops down here. Uh, and this level here is the 1.25, which is a big round number. Not looking good on the Pound USD. So not looking good on the Pound at all. Let's have a look at New Zealand CAD. Hopefully that'll come up quicker than... Uh, all right, another one that's not looking that flash, but the good news is I'm still in a sell from the 6th of December. Just drag my stop down. Can't lose on the sell. Took a buy here. Now, this was a big divergence there. I like this buy. But my concern is, and as I said there, slightly higher risk due to market structure. Like price has gone up, gone up, gone up. Had a go at this high a few times. Hasn't done it. Got to it again. Comes down here, so it breaks all these lows here. So you think that market's probably turning down. So and as I noted, higher risk trade due to market, uh, market structure. But there was hidden bullish divergence there. MACD platinum's been below the zero level for, since here, so it's a long time. Again, I'll probably be stopped out of this. And in my private trading, I'll be. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be hedging this. Uh, but this is going to be stopped out, obviously, before we get a hedge. We're very close to that stop there, very close, but not yet. Uh, where's my stop at? 81546, look up here for low. Uh, 81582, so <laughs> we're only four pips away from the stop. 
But the good thing is I've got this sell trade on, so it offsets this loss here. And all I'm doing is going to drag this trail to stop down on the sell, and eventually this will come to the buy side again. As I said, we're below the zero level on the MACD. So not looking good, but it's not the end of the world either. New Zealand, Swiss. All right, another one I'm in the sell from the 13th of December. So all good. I can't lose on the sell. I'm dragging my stop down. I'm trailing my stop now. Um, then we took the buy. Took a long time. The actual signal's here. This is one that's a little bit different. Uh, late to entry and high risk trade is trading against the trend. I thought this support level would hold here. I basically took the buy in here. Had this sort of had this bearish candle, bullish candle, bearish candle, bullish candle. I thought it's holding. I'll take the buy, and it was a bearish candle. Look at that. Look at that candle action there. Now that. On a daily chart, that's a nightmare. But you know, on a one-hour chart, there's probably excellent trading opportunities in there. But it just you just don't see that. Doesn't know if it's coming or going. Arthur or Martha. Um, so we've gone up, popped up, got close to the entry level again, and popped down. I know a few people already been stopped out of this trade. Uh, probably got in here at the actual entry, and your stop would have been below here somewhere, and probably stopped out in here. And I, I was a bit late to the party, and it was a high risk trade. And, I've said that, but the good thing is I've got the sell on, so that's, again, it's offsetting the loss. And that's the big advantage of keeping open trades on sometimes. It's like an insurance, and like any insurance, there is a premium, you've got to pay for it, uh, but I'm, I'd rather be safe than sorry sort of thing. You know, that's, that's why you have insurance. USD CAD, highlight in orange for a reason. Um, it was just it was stopped out. So I took this buy here. When was that? 3rd of Jan. Closed half on the 10th, so let's have in here somewhere. It wasn't going anywhere fast. MACD Platinum's already through the zero level. It's a high risk trade against the trend. Closed half. Eventually dragged my stop up a little bit higher, locked in some profit. And on this candle here, I think that was the uh, 30th of Jan, stopped out for a small overall profit, overall small profit. Then I took this sell here and it went against me from the get-go. Didn't break the previous high here, which is good. Drew this trend line across here. It's come down through my entry level, back down. Then, bang, Friday news messed me up again. So so we're out of the buy. So I just, as I said, I'll leave it on the chart for the video to show you guys and girls that I was stopped out. And we're in a sell. Stop is up here for the sell. Uh, so we're slightly in the red there. Uh, I'll probably extend this a bit and see if this holds here. This would be one, if I did get an opposite QMP filter, I would take the, um, I'd just close out the cell and take a small loss before it gets to the stop, hopefully, and then look for another selling opportunity. That's, it, that's how it pans out. So USD CAD, stop that of the buy, still in the cell. Gold. Oh, that part quick. All right, took a buy here. Um, so when was that? 15th of Jan. This level here is a 2,000 level. Big, big round number on gold, all right? Price sort of come down, it bounced off it, took the buy. Opposite QMP filter, and I told you why last week. I didn't close because I'm relying on this 2,000 level to hold. And it sort of proved me right a little bit. I came down, another opportunity here. Now, so I, I think I called that in the group, the groups. Um, you could have taken another buy on the 30th of... Um, Jan, there's a new valid buy signal, there's green dots, a bit hard to see. Uh, it's gone up nicely, Thursday was good, then the non-farm payroll news messed me up again. So we're slightly in the in the red on gold. Uh, the stop's still below the 2,000 level, so going nowhere fast, basically, on gold. Next three are just more for um, shits and giggles, just more out of curiosity, US dollar. Um, the last signal was this sell signal here on the 24th of Jan, or the, the open on the 25th of Jan. MACD platinum above the zero level, um, hidden bearish divergence there. I'll be curious to see how this pans out because it's obviously bang gone up on, after Friday's news. Now this is the USD against uh, against these six currencies here, so it's like a like a, a an index as such. Well, it is called the index, US dollar index or whatever it is. Uh, we've got a higher high here, so we'll start drawing these trend lines in. So to give you a bit of an idea, that where's my thing? There it is, bearish. So we're going to potential divergence forming. Why is that not bearish? <laughs> Scary. 
So we've got higher high on price there, and at the moment we've got, uh, come on. All right, this is doing my head in. So we've got potential divergence forming there. So we had hidden bearish divergence first up, and we've got potential regular bearish divergence forming. So it's like they'll one, two, the double whammy on divergences. US stock market, US 500. Um, last thing was this sell signal here. Broke the previous high, so we've gone up, gone up, gone up. Wednesday came back to it and just bounced up. So again, we're heading up. Big divergence still, big regular bearish divergence. Moving average is starting to spread, stack to the upside, trend is up. Who knows where it goes? Best thing to just jump on and pound for the ride. And don't get too caught up in the fundamentals of why it's doing what it does. All right, Bitcoin, BTC, USD. Um, last thing was this buy here. Now, this is one of these market structure ones. Like, you know, we got, this is a trend, high, high lows, high, high, high lows, high, high, sort of starting to sort of fizzle out when it got up near the 50,000 level. And we've come down, we've taken out the previous low, we've gone back up again, so here's your buy signal. Now, this is not a strong buy signal because of the market structure. And here we are, we've got, we haven't broken this high here. We're getting pretty close to um, halving on BTC. I'm not really sure what it is, but it happens every four years, apparently. There's no exact, there is a, an exact date, but nothing really happens on the date itself. It sort of revolves around it. So generally in the history shows that every time there's been a halving of Bitcoin, it eventually goes into a massive bull market. So the halving's coming up, I think it's April. Not, Don't quote me on that. Um, and you will see a big, you'll, you more than likely will see a big rise on Bitcoin at some point. But it's struggling at the moment between the 40,000 and 45,000 level. All right, boys and girls, that's it for the charts. It's probably a bit stop-start this video because uh, I've had issues with the internet, the charts loading, etc. so I've hit the pause button a thousand times. Uh, hopefully I haven't messed it up too bad and it's, there's some continuity to it. Um, enjoy your weekend. Stay safe. And like I said, everyone's more than welcome to join any of the JagFX um, groups, whether it be the Facebook group, Telegram channels, or the Family Man Discord channel. I uh, call all the trades live at the time, uh, take a screenshot, share them in a folder. Everyone's got access to them. They're all, and any trade management's also called live at the time. So, look, it hasn't been a good week this week. The news yesterday or last night sort of messed us up on the, especially the, a lot of the USD pairs. But the good thing is, most of them, except for, I think for the pound USD, I've still got a sell trade on, so it's not the end of the world. So that's, that's no big deal. Right, stay safe, enjoy your weekend, and thanks for watching, and I will talk to you good folk sometime next week. I've got to find the off button now. See ya.